Things in the United States have uh, certainly started to get interesting in the last period. Uh, we've seen over the last couple of years uh, the rise of this very important and very interesting movement, Black Lives Matter, which is finally bringing to the forefront the question of police brutality, the question of racism is now on the agenda in the United States in a way it hasn't uh, happened before. Uh, and of course, on the, the political scene, you have all kinds of chaos and, uh, and very interesting developments. Now, not too long ago, people used to think that revolution and pre-revolutionary situations were, were things that only happened in places like Venezuela or, or Bolivia or, or Greece. But it doesn't happen in places like, uh, like Britain or France uh, or Italy, uh, and certainly not in a place like the United States. But uh, I think all the, the doubters out there are, are starting to see that all the pent-up frustration, all the pent-up anger, all the uh, just discontent with the status quo that has been accumulating in the United States for the last few decades is finally starting to bubble to the surface in, uh, in a variety of ways and in some perhaps unexpected ways uh, because of the particular and peculiar way that uh, politics and uh, society in the United States has developed, going all the way back to its founding, uh, but also continuing through the revolution, uh, and, uh, and the U.S. Civil War, the struggles in the 1930s and the 60s and so on. And uh, here we are today in uh, 2016, uh, nearly 100 years since the Russian Revolution, and we still haven't overthrown capitalism, and that introduces all kinds of contradictions uh, and complications, but also tremendous opportunities for Marxists to connect with people on the necessity for uh, the socialist revolution and the socialist transformation of, uh, of the world, including, of course, the United States, which is an integral part of the world system. Now, uh, politically, uh, a lot of people thought that, you know, the, the United States politics was kind of a joke, you know, especially during the George Bush years. Uh, th there was a lot of, uh, you know, mocking uh, of the United States. Uh, when Obama was elected, there were a lot of expectations, a lot of hope for change and so on. But of course, being a, a capitalist politician and defending capitalism and imperialism, he ultimately carried out essentially the same kinds of policies as George Bush, and there was a lot of disappointment and, and discontent. Um, now, as Marxists, we've always explained that if you follow a, a lesser evil approach to politics, i.e. if you vote for the Democrats who are considered the lesser evil because of certain concessions that that party was able to grant in the past in order to stave off social unrest, uh, if, you, if you elect the lesser evil, eventually that's going to prepare the conditions because of the discontent uh, with the, the failure of that party to actually do anything for the working class because it's not a working class party, it's a capitalist party, uh, it's, it used to be a slaveholders party. Uh, because of that discontent, eventually you could have the rise uh, of an even more uh, vicious right wing coming to power. And now in the United States, you see this, uh, this reactionary uh, Donald Trump who is now actually tied in the polls with Hillary Clinton and could potentially, based on uh, what happens in the next few months, become the next president of the United States, which uh, just a few months ago seemed completely unthinkable. The Republican Party, uh, the party that was founded um, in 1854, the party of Abraham Lincoln, the party that waged uh, ultimately a revolutionary war against slavery, has now been taken over by, by someone like Donald Trump. And then there's crisis in that party. And one of the key pillars of, of US uh, capitalist rule in the United States and around the world is, uh, is, is in a very deep crisis. And of course, on the other side of the spectrum, uh, for lack of an alternative, because in the United States, because of the way things have developed, we don't have a mass workers party. We don't have a mass socialist party. Uh, the the, the, the left-leaning uh, part of the working class and of the youth have been compelled uh, to support the Democrats as a, as a lesser evil, so to speak, uh, for many, many elections. Uh, this time around, though, things got really shaken up with the candidacy of Bernie Sanders, a senator from the state of Vermont. Uh, and I think that his campaign has really made waves all around the planet. People very astonished and, and excited to see the huge rallies, tens of thousands of people coming out to support someone who openly identified as a socialist and was attacking Wall Street, was calling for political revolution against the billionaire class, uh, and, and people felt that they finally had a, a voice in, uh, in, in, in Bernie Sanders. 
Uh, and uh, we explained, we, uh, Socialist Appeal in the United States, we explained from the beginning that we thought it was a mistake for him to run uh, as a Democrat. That party is controlled uh, firmly by the capitalist class. Uh, it's the party in power. It's a very unpopular party, generally speaking. And um, it, it ultimately is not going to be able to do anything good for the working class because it represents uh, an, a hostile and alien class, the capitalist class. Uh, now, of course, Sanders thought that he could get more uh, coverage in the media. He could get more uh, attention if he participated in the Democratic Party debates uh, as a Democrat. But in, in the final analysis, uh, all that energy that he put into that campaign, which ultimately failed, uh, in part because of the undemocratic rules uh, of the Democratic Party, in part because of the, the specter of the so-called superdelegates uh, you know, giving the nomination to Hillary no matter what happened, um, all that energy has now gone into basically uh, endorsing Hillary as, as the lesser evil. Once again, we fall right back into the lesser evil politics and Bernie Sanders has, uh, has betrayed a lot of people's hopes and aspirations by doing so. We explain that if all that energy, all those rallies had been put into building a new party, a mass workers party, a mass socialist party, an independent party that would run uh, separately from the capitalist parties, from the Democrats and Republicans, uh, by this point he would have had uh, the beginnings of, of what maybe may not have won the elections this year, but the foundations then for something uh, much bigger in the future. Instead, very disappointing uh, for a lot of people, uh, Bernie Sanders ended up uh, endorsing Hillary Clinton this last week, and uh, they're now left with very few options uh, as, as far as the uh, 2016 elections go. They can either support the lesser evil, some of his supporters might even support um, Donald Trump, uh, because they just don't want a status quo politician. They don't want someone, uh, you know, as hated as Hillary Clinton for all her working anti-working class policies uh, in the U.S. and around the world. And uh, and then some of them, of course, will will support uh, the Green Party, which is running independently of the Democrats and Republicans, but ultimately probably is not in a position, uh, definitely not in a position to actually win these elections. Now, up until very recently. Uh, we thought that the momentum that Sanders had could have been uh, harnessed in order to, even at this late stage, try to get on the ballot, try to establish a party, try to, to make big waves in, uh, in U.S. politics in this election. And, and I don't think it's ruled out that he could have actually won. 39% of young people uh, consider themselves, I'm uh, sorry, 39% of all voters consider themselves independents. That's a plurality. That means that if those 39% voted for an independent candidate, it would have defeated both Hillary Clinton and, uh, and Donald Trump. In other words, could have actually won the presidency. And it's actually 39% uh, of the vote which Abraham Lincoln won in 1860 to become the first president of the Republican Party and then again wage that revolutionary war against slavery. Uh, a, 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 a huge number of Americans now consider themselves uh, in, independence, as I've said, and young people especially, 65% of young people did not want uh, Sanders to endorse Hillary. They wanted him to run as an independent. So it's uh, the potential for big transformations uh, in the United States are, are, are still very evident. And ultimately, this is all happening because of the crisis of capitalism. Uh, the 2008 crisis uh, of, of the U.S. economy and the world economy marked a turning point in, in world history and uh, in, in the transformation of consciousness of the American working class and especially the youth, young people who have known nothing except war and terrorism and austerity and cuts and, uh, and lack of opportunities and, and, uh, and the, the polarization in the country, which ultimately reflects class polarization, but because of the lack of an alternative, because of the lack of a lead by the labor leaders in, in, in fighting for new trade unions, in going out on strike, in, in increasing uh, wages, and in, in, in building a political party of, by, and for the working class, you see the polarization taking all kinds of strange forms, including uh, on the question of things like uh, of racism and so on, you see a layer of the working class who, who can sense the decline of U.S. capitalism and U.S. imperialism. They fear the consequences of this and therefore they, they become more conservative. And, and the root of conservatism ultimately is the desire to hold on to what little you have, to conserve what you've got. And in the face of all these changes, these scary changes, uh, they, they, many of these people become susceptible to the, to the right-wing populism and demagogy, the anti-immigrant, anti, -immigrant, anti 
you know, Muslim statements uh, that Donald Trump has made. And, uh, and so it's a very confused uh, situation, a very uh, complicated situation. But I think in the grand scheme of things, things are very clearly headed towards the left in the United States. It's not going to be a linear process. It's not going to be a simple process. But sooner or later, uh, there will be a mass outlet for this discontent. Uh, you see the beginnings of it, again, with Black Lives Matter. You see the beginnings of it with Bernie Sanders' campaign. And all these different streams of struggle and, and of discontent and, and anger are, are eventually going to converge into one raging river of class struggle that's going to transform uh, the United States and transform the world. So uh, keep an eye out on events in the United States. Bernie Sanders' endorsement of Hillary Clinton is not the end of people's desire for a political revolution, for a social revolution, uh, the desire to fight for a completely different kind of society, a society that is absolutely possible based on the technology, based on the superabundance that already exists or potentially exists on the basis of capitalism. Once that's unleashed from the profit motive, all kinds of uh, uh, of, of transformations of how of how people live, of how people interact, of how people uh, see each other, uh, how they work, how they, everything that we do is going to be transformed. Uh, and of course, this is one of the key uh, you know key things if we want to actually ensure that this planet remains habitable for humanity. We have to t take control. Uh, out of the hands of the capitalists, take control out of the hands of capitalism. We need to get rid of capitalism. We need a socialist revolution. And, and don't be surprised if the United States isn't, isn't the last country on the planet uh, to, to move in that direction. So uh, there's no better time to be a Marxist. There's no better time to be involved in the IMT. Things are really exciting uh, all around the world, including the United States. And Marxist.com has a, a wealth of information of, of educational materials as well as current event analysis and uh, really urge people around the world to get involved in your country, in the United States especially, if you're out there, you're, you're watching this, you're checking out Marxist.com, you're wondering whether you should get involved, you definitely should. Send us a note. Uh, we'd love to work together uh, to build the forces of Marxism, to build the forces of the IMT.